Thank you, everyone. Welcome to our September meeting. Okay, now we're ready. Welcome, everyone, to our September meeting of the um, Town of Niskayuna Public Works Committee. Um, so, Matt, Kathy will take attendance too. From the yeah, screen. I think every she has everyone's name from the from the list. Um, she can do it from the video. I don't I don't see why. The only question that I guess she would have was the person on by telephone, the, with the number nine zero in the at the end. Okay, so who is that? Who's that? Is Josh. Hi, it's Diane Percy. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to know because that's no, no, one thank you. Kathy will have. <laughs> thank, thank you. Okay, great. So since Kathy's not here, I'm gonna skip the acceptance of the minutes because if there are questions for Kathy, so um, okay. we'll move on to the next item. Okay. Okay. So the uh, the first item um, is our uh, COVID nineteen response uh, update. Um, everything's been running smoothly as far as uh, the social distancing, the use of uh, the thermometers in the morning um, and, and, and tracking of who enters our facilities. The only update I have that's different is uh, we are just about complete with our new policy for home entry that uh, our individuals that will be doing water meter uh, replacements and anyone going in for a service call would be following. Um, I want to thank Josh and Alexis for working on that. Um, I think we're 99% done. Josh, if I'm correct, we can't hear you. You're muted. How about now? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we're about 99% done. I just had a couple uh, uh, small changes. I wanted to bounce off electrics, and we added an uh, emergency home entry uh, protocol as well. That's a little bit different in case there's a middle of the night with a water break. If we're, you know, have a need to get into a house, there's a protocol for that as well. Thank you. So now that we have that, we're going to begin ramping up our water meter replacement. Um, once again, we were sort of on a uh, hold on that since this whole um, pandemic began. Um, the goal is to try to get through a large number of residential and commercial meters this year and then continue into next year and um, trying to head off the you know, the um, the failures you would get as a, the meters age out. Uh, B is an update on the on the uh, the new GPS tracking for our, our vehicles and assets. Uh, I'd met or spoke on the a telephone for quite a long time with T-Mobile. Um, they have my list of vehicles. Uh, I talked some, some of the options over with them and uh, they'll be sending us um, some more information and um, the implementation team will be contacting me so that we can get everything set up on their end. They'll do all these programming and then send us the units um, and videos and to show us how to install them in the, in the individual vehicles. Uh, as of right now, I'm looking to do 28 vehicles. Uh, item three, um, attorney's items. Paul, I don't know if there's any update on the, the Whitmire Drive. I'm sorry, Matt, can we go back? And I know Paul sure. is just getting the agenda now. And I also wanted to start by apologizing to folks. I know some people were on at 8 o'clock or trying to get on at 8 o'clock. There was some confusion around the time today. Um, it, the wrong time was posted online. We, I, I do not post the meetings online. Um, we had scheduled these meetings for 8.30 to accommodate other departments attending. So um, we're going to stick with the 8.30. Or whoever posts them online. Um, Matt, the T-Mobile, the department is installing those them ourselves? It's a very simple process. You just oh, plug good. them in. Okay. Yeah, yep. I don't need to know anymore. All right. Um, I hope I just bought myself enough time for Paul Briggs to, to address the <laughs> attorney's matters. Yes, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, with regard to the two outside um, extensions on Whitmire and Pierce, Unfortunately, I've not been, you know, or fortunately, I've not been in the office for the last two weeks. And um, when I was prior to that, the so there were some other town issues that took precedent. 
So I will be working on those starting. I actually am working Monday, even though it's an off day because I've been out so long. So I'll be working on those Monday and Tuesday. Um, the next item on the agenda is what? Pierce Road. Uh, that same same answer for Pierce. For Pierce Road. Pierce, okay. Pierce. And then do we have the water, the city water bill meeting? I'm going to just go through and I'll ask you questions. No. How's that? So, so that meeting isn't set up yet? Not. I've had not heard. I've reached out to the city attorney and he hasn't gotten back to me. Yeah, I know that that one is not you. I know you've tried. You set it up once. We had to cancel it. So um, the Ingersoll home issue, Paul. We haven't we haven't had any response to that. Matt, have you heard anything from them about their? No, I haven't. We, we've assembled a, a, a summary of cost that, that was faced by the town so that we can give that to you, Paul, if you're doing a follow up letter with some numbers to try to move them along. So I would like that so that I can I'm going to ask them to reimburse the town for that. And that, as you say, that may cause them to more seriously look at engineering that as we figured where they may need a, some sort of a grinder pump there, right? Some, yeah. sort, some sort of grinder, yes. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Um, and there's just one more for you and then I have one more as it relates to um, sewer extensions. Um, Paul, the um, the easements on Comanche Trail? So I've taken care, I've spoken to the homeowner on Comanche Trail. I've spoken to the homeowner on um, Windsor. Okay. And I remember what was, there was another one Campo I saw. Campo Court. Campo Court. That's a new one. Okay. What is that about, Matt? It's, it's a just a, it's a shed in, in, a, in, a, in a drainage easement. Alex, so, um, Josh and Jessica have, have looked those over and, and Ray is in agreement that there's no issues. So we can move forward with your, your uh, contact with them, Paul. So just as usual, Josh will send me the contact information and a copy of the map, and I'll get a whole, those will all be ready for the next town board meeting. Okay. Thank you. So, Josh, I just had one more. It's that um, Ball Town Road sewer extension. So your Great. recommendation to those folks was to try to get in touch with the church and others behind them. Is that Great. something that they would do, knock on their door? Is that something that we or Paul Briggs facilitates? You know, I just don't know when we're sending neighbors to neighbors, how successful they ever, any of them ever end up being. It, that ends up being a, a private easement agreement between okay. two people. So I, I would think that that's how it would be handled, but uh, I don't know if Briggs has a, a different thought okay. on that. If there's some sort of standard or, you know, we're gonna just send a guy who doesn't really know what he's talking about to go ask for an easement agreement. I don't know if he knows what that means even, right? So yeah. those neighbors over there. I mean, what they know so far is they called your office, they called mm -hmm. the, you know, that's what they know how to do, right? I don't know if they even understand what easements are and all of that. So um, if we're gonna ask them to do that, I wanna make sure they're asking for the right thing. So I need to get involved in that, even though it's okay. private, just to give them some guidance because- Okay, all great. We were trying to avoid putting, giving you one more thing, but so, so the so issue Scott, is yep. the, there's a group, uh, there's a neighbor, a few neighbors, um, between the Rosa Road, River Road Light on Ball Town, and then back up to um, Alexis. You may be familiar with Alexis. So yep. it's like a block long stretch. Behind them is the church um, and they don't have sewer. They have old houses and they don't have sewer and they would like sewer. And so who needs easement, Josh? Homeowners. An easement over the church property? Correct. That's that seems to be the most uh, probable connection point for them with sewer. So yeah, it would be. A, I can send you a map that'd be a little bit clearer in the map. But it'd be the the resident that wants to connect, having to cross with their sewer lateral across the church property to reach the town right away, where there's a sewer manhole that they could tie into. So I I facilitated the same sort of thing on St. David's Lane a couple years ago. So I can just help with that. This too. That would be great. All right. We'll connect everyone on that. Josh, thank you very much. You, you, you got right on top of it very quickly. I really appreciate it. All right, Paul Briggs, it was lovely seeing the inside of your car. We may see it again, but for right now, we're going to move right along to water and sewer maintenance. Okay. Oh, wastewater so wastewater treatment plant. Do you have it? Do you have anything on wastewater treatment plant? The um, only thing I, wait, the only thing I have for, is, I'm sorry. But for attorney items, we did that last um 
minute addition for the easements for the fence agreements or the easement agreements? That was why we redid the agenda. Yeah, that was what we just talked about. Oh, the trail line. Laura is a fence. I'm sorry. So he was what that was that Laura? No. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, that, I just want to make sure we did properties. the right thing. Tell us. Is that what you were looking for? Yeah, sorry. I thought we hadn't gotten there yet. <laughs> sorry. That's okay. It happens to me all the time and I'm running the meeting. So I more <laughs> than understand. All right. Wastewater treatment plant. Uh, so uh, just, I left it on there just for an update. Is there any update on that mitigation plan for the high strength waste acceptance? I don't have an update um, if you would like to contribute to it. So that's kind of where we left it off uh, last meeting. Um, everyone is in the review stage. So if there's anything you want to add or subtract from it, okay. um, and, then, and then we can, or we can have another discussion, um, you know, whatever you guys want to do. And then we can go ahead and schedule that um, meeting with um, okay. stakeholders okay. somewhere. Why don't we schedule a, a meeting just on this topic? And I don't sure. think it needs to be, um, at, we could almost schedule one at one time and the other at the other time on the same day. I mean, I'm not really sure how much more tinkering with this. A lot of it is stuff that's already been done or stuff that for yep. one reason or another. I mean, maybe the um, speed limit now might be something that we could try to address again. There might be a less of a reluctance on the speed limit, but okay, right? It, it, maybe that's the best way to go with folks, right? Okay. All right. Great. Thank so, you. And thank I'll you again for your work on this. Absolutely. It just, it, you know, it, it just all needed to be put in one place and, and you were willing to do that to gather up everything that's been done or requested. So thank you. Water and sewer maintenance. Um, just an update on the Mohawk Road water main replacement project. They're about halfway completed with the main on, on Mohawk Road. Um, I assume, or I expect that they'll be finishing up construction about a month and a half. Everything seems to be going well now. Um, county's happy with the, the road work. Um, residents seem to be understanding of the short-term outages that are occurring because of the, the connections and, and other issues out there. So, um, hopefully by next month, uh, I'll be reporting that they're in the final stages of the project. Uh, B, we need um, to hire a contractor to build a roof structure over the fueling system that is being installed currently at the water and sewer garage. Um, this is something we mentioned before and we actually made budget mods to cover this, um, but we didn't have a price together yet, uh, formal quotes from contractors. We have uh, one, verbal from a contractor, which we just need to get a written quote from him. And then also a second quote, which Josh is working on and we'll have prior to the meeting. Um, we have quotes from a contractor to uh, install a meter vault and change piping at the Valerie Drive sewer pump station. It's been a project that's been planned for quite some time. We have uh, part part of the money is bonded money from the past that was uh, bonded for that water meter or that that meter in the vault, uh, and then the rest would come out of the the, the capital line that we have. Um, we have one quote, and we're expecting a second quote any day now, and we'll be ready to award at the end of, the, end of this month. Uh, D, uh, we have several thousand feet of water main that runs through the woods along um, Linwood Drive and then also along River Road. It's large diameter water main and it, the valves that are on that line date back to the 1960s. Um, they can't be relied upon because of their age and the soil conditions. Right. So this would be um, hiring a contractor to come in. We, we met with this one contractor who does this type of work and another one that does this type of work is the same contractor doing our water main work on Mohawk Road. It's a uh, live insertion of valves without having to turn the water off. Uh, so the 16 inch main on, on Linwood Drive that's, that feeds our water towers from the, from the water plant, um, by closing that off, 
um, inserting a valve without having to turn the water off to the areas around it. Um, we can then minimize areas of, of, of shutdown for future work as well. So um, they can run anywhere from you know 15 to 20,000, depending on the size of the valve. Um, so uh, I do have money in the in the 2000 line for water distribution, and this would be a good use for that. So if based on the on the dollar amount, I'd like to do possibly two or three valves. Um, there is some savings for um, economy of scale because the mobilization cost is quite high. And E is just an update. Uh, we took three water and sewer maintenance workers and um, elevated them to being on call. They, they volunteered for the on-call duty uh, to, because they're relatively new. This is uh, related to the MOA that we did a, a last year, I think it was, that allowed me to elevate people uh, to being on call without having the, the past years, it used to be five years of experience that we required. Um, based on my approval um, in their contract, I can let them go on call. Uh, so because they're relatively new, we've started doing some shadowing as well. So uh, if certain, under certain emergency conditions, the on-call person is calling in a second person as a trainee to work alongside with that person. It seems to be going well. Uh, and then we're also doing a lot of uh, training during the, the regular business hours as well. Six, uh, utility billing. Um, just uh, item A is the um, reconciliation for the second half of the for the residential commercial utility uh, bills. Um, everything is all set except for um, Bellevue Hospital, which I'll mention down below. Okay. So we should have all the, the numbers ready for the meeting. Um, 783 Pierce Road uh, had a high water bill and uh, challenged their bill. We went out to check to see what was going on. The, the, the homeowner claimed that they were, that the house was vacant at the time. And there's no way they could have used that amount of water. I don't have that number in front of me right now. Josh, do you remember, do you recall what that was? I believe it was 2300 was the bill. Okay. So when we went out to check to see what was going on, we found a garden hose running in the backyard. Oh. Uh, so <laughs> it's pretty, pretty straightforward what occurred. Um, they did not pay, I don't believe they paid the bill, but it will roll over to taxes um, the second half of the year. I just wanted to just let people know if, if, if we hear any more regarding that, that property, we did address it and we did find an, an issue. I just want to just to state that like, when I talked to the homeowner, they, they kind of challenged the idea that the garden hose was running, but that was what our, our the person that went out in the field observed. So that's what we have documented. But it was, so it's aware that they are disputing that. So that is uh, what the conversation was with them last. Yeah, that's actually documented in the water billing software. Mm -hmm. That was a comment placed on their account. I mentioned Bellevue Hospital. So Bellevue Hospital did a renovation in 2013. And I mentioned this before, we, we, we prorated their bill for them because they installed two new, uh, um, a meter uh, that was not picked up by our system. So we didn't build right. them. So we, we prorated it based on the current water rates for those years. Um, so their bill right now went from 66 down to 58, just under $59,000. They're requesting a payment plan. I know back when we changed meters several years ago, we did payment plans for people, Paul. I don't recall if we did it for businesses, and I didn't know if the committee would be willing to do that for them. I don't remember ever doing one for a commercial property. Okay. So what's the, so the committee's thought is to just have them pay the bill? Well, what's their what's their annual bill normally about? I don't I don't have that in front of me. I mean, is it twenty thousand dollars? Or is it a hundred thousand dollars? Right. All right. Can you? Yeah, I have. I can have Chris figure that out. 
if this needs to get done right away, then bring it back for finance and we can discuss it at finance, Matt, if you need some sort of. Okay. That way, I'll, that way we can have the reconciliation ready for the, uh, for the board meeting. Okay. So, um, but just try to get this to Briggs and the supervisor and me as quickly as you can. I can. Yeah. Right, whatever the number is, right? I mean, that's going to predicate the decision. So, so uh, seven, the finance committee. Um, most of these are just carried over from up above, but um, I leave it on there every every month just for an update. The Spectrum franchise agreement. Is there anything new on that? No update. Okay. And uh, all the way down to G. That that is actually uh, that's been done. That was done last month, so we're, that's okay. Yeah. And then other departments um, for the uh, transfer station, landfill, and the former water and sewer garage. Um, I want to thank Ray for helping out with the grading um, of the former water and sewer garage site. I know I saw them out there the other day working. Uh, I know they're busy, so uh, I know everyone's eager to get that site graded off and stabilized for the uh, for the winter. So I thank Ray for what he's done and hopefully, um, is, is Ray on the call? Yes, go ahead, Matt. What do you think, realistically, what do you think the plans are? I know you're, I know you're busy. Well, I, I know you said you wanted to have your open house and that I, I'm gonna try to get that done by, you know, the at least the beginning of October, I'm okay. hoping. And that's graded out with stone and everything, so pretty much usable at that point. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Ray. You're welcome. And B, that is dependent upon the, the grading, I guess, to um, the uh, date for the open house for the transfer station. Uh, Denise, I know Kathy usually has to call in advance for the shredder to come in, but I, I think... Um, about a month notice is what they needed in the past. So, okay. Are we looking at maybe mid to late October? If uh, you tell me, right? I mean, you've dictated when we were going to do this. That's why we didn't do it in the spring and we didn't. But um, I think it's well worth it because we're going to have a, I hope, from what I'm hearing, a nice spot for people to come visit, right? And a real reason to go over there. So, um, if you think we can pull it off, then great. You know, I said I was willing to go even into early November. It's not like people are standing around for an hour. They're just coming in. You wanted to be safe. You wanted to shoot for early November. I, yeah, I mean, the let um, the the last Saturday. Halloween is the last Saturday, so we won't do it that day. We could do it the twenty fourth, or we could do it the fall. You know. The first Saturday in November. Okay, I, I I'll talk to Kathy when when she's in and I see what the availability is for the shredder. Okay. And we'll I mean, I would obviously that. prefer the twenty fourth of October, but um, for a variety of reasons. But let I have Kathy let me know, or you know, we can all talk about it. Okay. That's Great. all I have. Hey, hey Matt. Yes. I have a quick question. It was the TV recycle event last year, a one-time thing, or is that annual? No, that's, that's part of that. That's part of that event we're talking about. Oh, so it's all one. Because I remember. So, is there going to be any change in the fees? Because I remember that required a resolution last year. I think Josh, the fees have been stable, right? Yeah, we did modify the fees for some of the electronics based on the rates that e waste is charging us. Um, that was a one-time thing. I haven't um, seen any changes in, in rates this year so i think that'll be stable for a little while at some point obviously things inflate but um i think we're stable right now with the the rates well and kathy may know more when she books it right yeah possibly we, i mean we we pay the uh, whenever they pick up the e-waste from the transfer station we get an idea of what we what they're billing us when we get right. that in so so we keep track of it that way as well great thank you does that event interfere at all with the early voting? Not really, right? You could have both of them going on at the same time. We're going to have it at the wastewater treatment. Uh, we're going to have it at oh, the cancer so that station. Won't matter at all. Okay. But that was very thoughtful of you. Yes, I had one other thing question, and maybe you covered this in the beginning while I was off camera uh, feeding Taylor, but when is the um, when is the splash flash, 
close this season? So um, what we did last year was we kind of played it by year. I mean, we would, you know, obviously since the kids aren't going back to school, you know, on Tuesday or, you know, they normally, I think last year we kept it open until the end of September and it looked to me, I mean, Matt, you tell me otherwise, it looked like, it, you know, there were some days it was still getting a lot of use because it was yeah, still pretty really warm. Sense. So, you know, and that's one of the nice things about the splash pad. We closed the pool on Monday, but the splash pad is, you know, it's more nimble. We can turn it, you know, it, if it snows on September 15th, then we're going to close the splash pad. So to the end of the month, the, the short then, answer to that. Yeah. Well, so I can bring Taylor for the next couple of weeks then. Good. Yeah. Um, and then second follow-up question was this came up in highway parks and rec committee yesterday. Um, do we have the status of the county's money that they donated? I know they were going to do a handicap, make the splash pad uh, handicap accessible. Do we have a status update on that? If we've received the money or if when's that happening this year or next year? I don't know the answer to that. Other people have talked about it and seemed like they knew more about it than I did. So I don't know. No. I, I don't know. I can certainly ask. I mean, that's a, an important question. So I will do that today. And then other people can talk about it. All right. Um, Matt, that's all you have? Yes. One page. Wow. Yeah. Laura almost ruined it though with the last minute edition, but oh. <laughs> I made it work. <laughs> gosh, gosh. Wow, Rich Pollock would just be getting warmed up around now. Um, <laughs> all right, well, if does I, anybody else have anything? This is a new record. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna blow it. So, I do have an executive executive session yes. on there. Okay, so I am going to um, move to um, call an executive session um, to discuss a personnel matter. I am then, um, we are going to come back in to adjourn, um, but we will have no further business. So we, um, for our executive session, we need the supervisor, obviously, and Matt Yetto and Alexis Kim, is Matt, um, Paul Briggs, please. And Josh, I, that's, that's a Matt Yetto call. Yep, that's either way is fine. Okay, thank you all very much. Thank you. We just have to wait, I think. Bill Lawrence, if you don't mind taking us off the live stream. Oh, we could. Um, Matt, do you 